the floor. Just, just, just no one make fun of my hair, okay? Olivia, um, that's to you. Um, anyway, hey, good morning, everyone. It is, you know what the problem is? I want to look at the screen and look at you two here. That's it. Anyway, I'll try it this way, okay. Um, hey, Virginia, is your dad here yet? <laughs> Not dead, but I was waiting for you to tell me that he was good. Let me yeah, invite him. Yeah, any call. Wednesday, any Wednesday, you just surprise us. And uh, and and if you if have him come on, have him come on. I'll stop whatever we're talking about. Um, any Wednesday, you know, quarter of well, as people are gathering and getting their coffee and doing whatever they do in the morning. Um, that would be great. Uh, if you weren't here last week, Virginia would talk about her dad, who's 80, how, how old is 86? Well, I thought he was 85, but he's 84. He corrected me. He's in, he Whoa. said he's in his third youth. Don't even mention to him that he's a senior. He's in his third youth. Well, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no age, right? There is no age. There's just mindsets of age. Uh, but anyway, hey, I am so glad you are here this morning. Um, we've, got, we've got a really interesting project I want to show you. Uh, and get you involved in. And it is going to be so, any questions of your life, you're going to, I mean, this came to me, I've, I've been working on so many things, but this came to me this morning, uh, just as I was waking up and, um, you know, I, I just, you know, it just came to me. Uh, it, it was a course I was taking this past week and they were using for something totally different. I went, oh my gosh, the light bulb came on. I said, Oh my gosh, this is incredible. It is really powerful. If you're multitasking or if you're doing something else, I, I'm going to take the first 30 minutes. I hope that you can turn off your computers, turn off your multitasking, whatever you're doing, because I really want to get you engaged in this. This is radically, radically, radically life changing. Um, and Again, I've got 70 years of this stuff. So when if I say that, I don't say it lightly. So I am so excited about what what this is and 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 where it's going. Um, I mean, it was like de definitely so it, it was incredible this morning what how this came about. So stay tuned if you're if you're multitasking, if you're doing try to really pay close attention for at least the first 30 minutes. And then as we get into general discussions and stuff, uh, if you need to check out on us, we might let you do it then, okay? Um, one of the things I'm gonna start doing with the Wisdom Wednesdays is because you can't gather wisdom when you're multitasking and all. And I know some of us use it for our walks and some of us use it for our workouts and some of us use it to try to multitask, but I want you to show up for the, like the first 35 minutes. And and I'm gonna start ending them at 40 minutes if the, if if, we feel like there's not enough mastermind material coming from each of us um, and that we're not benefiting one another because we don't want to just take time, right? So I want you to get so intentional. This October challenge that I've been getting people involved in, what's happening in a number of other people's lives that have really taken it serious is astounding, astounding. And that's the one that's on the mind body mastermind. Uh, it's been astounding for me. And I, thought I used to have a pretty darn good practice, but I just tricking myself. And what I'm going to reveal to you this morning is uh, it, it's just anyway, uh, I'm really I'm really stoked about it. And, and it almost brings tears to my eyes. It was so revealing this morning. And I and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So and where this whole thing is going with these projects I'm working on from mind, body, mastermind, but more deeper than that. And Tiffany, thank you. That really, I kid you not, that really meant a lot to me that you're going mindset, will set, skill set. I said, wow, she got it. <laughs> you know, because it is, it's the mindset first, it's the will set, and then it's the skill set. Um, so anyway, I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to share this with you. Um, and I'm going to ask that you really engage, please, 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 just for the first 25 minutes, 30 minutes, I want to really get you into yourself. Uh, the toughest job I have is selling people on themselves. So uh, let me, uh, I'm going to go over here and, and share my screen. Um, let me open this up here. There we go. So before we do that, how's everyone doing? Any great stories for this week? Um, you know, give, give us, speak up, say hello, say I'm glad to be here. I'm not glad to be here. Fred made me come here. 
Um, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> so speak up. Uh, say hello. Say good morning. Anybody? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. And somebody else. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Hey. Thank you, Steph. I can always depend on Stephanie. Stephanie, what happened this past week that is absolutely, it was on, on the scale of the really great, wonderful, good side, the left side or the right side, wherever that is, doesn't matter, any side. Give, give oh, us God. one. Oh, God, there's so many things. But um, one of the things for me, it has um, not much to do with real estate. It's more with my family, my daughter. Like I, I was able to, look at a situation that happened with my 15 year old and I feel like all I have to say is teenager and then everybody can understand but I was able to look at it as this is an opportunity to kind of help her to grow and um, I was able to go where I had to go to pick her up and be there so I was grateful for my career um, where I can do that um, but I was able to basically take myself like take a lot of the things that you uh, have implemented into our lives and look at it as life is not happening to me <laughs> like it's happening for me because I'm able to help her and guide her through what she's going through and it, it was just an, an amazing way to look at things as, as far as it's not happening to you but how I can actually help my daughter and it's, it's all from basically mind, a mindset perspective. Yeah, so you, can't, you, can't, you can't sense it. I am holding back the tears. I just, my, te my eyes are watering up. Um, Don't start is, that. <laughs> Don't it, is, start. it is something that I'm working on called juvenile justice. And uh, I had my 17 year old grandson do a, crime that he went away for 18 months. It shocked the family. And I have my daughter and I'm going publicly saying this and then taking the risk and it's okay because truth hurts. It hurts all of us, but that truth didn't start with me. It didn't start with her. It didn't start with my grandson. It started with my father, his father, his father, his father, his father. I go back to the movie, The Shack, where they ask him to come up and take over on the seat of judgment. Uh, and he refused to get on the seat of judgment when they pointed it out. How far do you want to go back? So there's no judgment, right? So when I bring up something personal like this that I'm going to bring up, I have a daughter who is, she owns a mental health clinic, a counseling clinic. And these boxes I'm going to show you this morning is one of the motivating factors behind this. I'm the blame for my, my grandson. Well, I'm, I'm one of the major blames for my grandson doing this thing and, and going away for 18 months. He just celebrated his 18th birthday, incarcerated. Um, and uh, this is getting very real, authentic, transparent, and vulnerable right now. Um, and th Seth, what a way to kick off a meeting. See, this is a mastermind. I don't know if all of you sense what Stephanie's heart was saying. I did because I've lived it. I was it. I was your 15 year old. Worse than that. I was much worse than that. Um, so my, my heart, my, my, prayers, my blessing for you. But what I'm going to show you this morning for your 15 year, I want you to explain it to your 15 year old as well. And one of the things we got to do with our 15 year olds in the juvenile justice is that these belief systems that we are giving them um, is they're bad. They're bad belief systems and they believe there's something wrong with them instead of something right with them. So I'm so glad we started out that way because that really goes into one. So, wow, good. See, that's a mastermind, folks. Steph, Steph, thank you for being authentic and transparent and vulnerable. So you said I had to go to where she was to pick her up. I, I felt your pain. Uh, it was painful where she was, correct? Thanks, Fred. It, it's it's painful, but the, the main point of it is that I I felt like I knew how to handle it. And and I was grateful to be able to like have that. OK, you know what? This is an, ex an opportunity to show her and to teach Amen. her. Yes. So. Yeah. Amen. Let's yeah. and <laughs> now, now, Steph, you're 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 in the real estate business. So you you developing that mindset of, of it's not happening to her. It's happening for her. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. What can we all learn from this? That mindset makes you a better real estate agent, believe it or not, right? Because now you're free and you're not all tense because there's nothing worse than being tense. My daughter who is you know, in this business and she has 50 counselors working for her, it is so 
difficult to see outside yourself. It really is. And I am going through one of the biggest struggles of my life. And when I say struggles, I don't like even using that word. One of the greatest learning opportunities with my family. And of which a lot of the pain I caused, because my father calls, my grandfather, my great grandfather, go way back, all because of belief systems. So anyway, uh, what a way to start out. And boy, it really goes in with what I'm going to show you. And it's powerful. So thank you. Anybody else before I go ahead and share my screen? Anybody? Wow, Steph. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because this is deep, folks. This is really deep. Um, and then one of the things, all this, what I'm going to show you here is, Annabelle, put in the link in case someone's our guest, uh, Mind Body Mastermind. Uh, by the way, we hit over 500 community members this week. Um, and this October project we're doing, oh my gosh, the reports I'm getting back from some people, it's astounding, astounding. And this is one, and, and take your 15 year old through this and hold her hand and say, let's do this every morning for 10 minutes. What, what did your inner voice say to you? What's your, what's your daughter's name, Steph? Jazz, Separate. Jasmine. Jasmine, uh, I, I really like you to just read this to her and say, Jasmine, let, if you don't mind, will you do this with me? And, and it's not, we're just going to be quiet for 10 minutes together and let whatever you listen to, whatever you hear, whatever. And, I, and then I'm going to share what I hear and feel. I like you to share what you hear and feel and, and try to do this with her and see if she'll do it. Um, because her, you know, she's hearing your voice. She's hearing her teacher's voice. She's hearing her dad's voice. She's hearing um, you, 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 you have, uh, how many children you have? Three. Three. And then she's the oldest or youngest? She's the oldest. Okay. And first yeah. of all, more pressure on her. That's probably been not been known to anybody and not intentional, but she has pressure that, you know, cause didn't, that, that's tough. My 18 year old, my grandson that just did what he did was the oldest. Um, Okay, so Jasmine, so but they, she's they ha she has, they hear you all the time. They hear all of everything that I'm listening to all the time. So they right. know right from wrong, <laughs> you know. Um, temptation is, is always there and it's going to happen. Well, yeah, but, but the thing I want them to hear, though, I don't want them to hear me. I don't want them to hear you. I don't want them to hear anybody else. I don't want them to hear the teachers. I want them to hear themselves. And this is the power of this. Your inner voice, illusions are reality. And and look, I'm 70 years old walking around with 80 times, 80 percent of my time. I'm living in illusion still. Right. So I, as a 15 year old, as I explained to my grandson, he can't explain why he did what he did. No one can explain why he did it. And it doesn't need to be explained. It needs to, he needs to start getting listened to his inner voice. Right. Seek, hear and learn and understand. So you try to just try to get her to fall in love with her inner voice. The thing I'm working on. Um, the soul cancer thing I keep talking about is getting the world to fall in love with love. Getting, first of all, getting myself to fall in love with love, love for myself, love for, you know, divine wisdom, love for divine intelligence, love for everything. Um, it's a project I'm working on along with the wisdom and, and this stuff here, but try to get her into this. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. Um, so anyway, let me share the screen with you. Thank you, Steph, for sharing. Um, but here, I want to share this with you. Um, and this, I hope that you print it out. Annabelle will share a copy of it with you. Um, let me go here uh, from the beginning. Definitely doing that now. And she's home with me because she has COVID. Because Ooh. again, it's like uh, the same rule of key, uh, arm's length of distance, <laughs> you know, but it's- Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So she's home okay. and I'm looking forward to sharing this information with her. That's great. That's great. All right, look at these eight boxes, okay? How many boxes do you see? Eight boxes. Where are the eight boxes? I see seven. So you can take this a box. Oh, you guys, right? Yeah. And then the outside is a box, right? But anyway, so describe what these eight boxes represent in one word about life, about your life, your personal life. What do these eight boxes represent in a 15 year old's life who's going through what she ever she's going through? What's, what, what are these eight boxes representing to a 17 year old who goes out, raising a wonderful, beautiful family, goes out and commits a, a crime? 
uh, and get sentenced to 18 months. What 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 do these boxes represent for the billionaire who feels like a bum? What do these boxes represent for someone who's married for 25 years and they haven't had sexual relationships for 15 years and they don't really love each other, but they're there for the kid? What do these boxes represent for someone who's got so much success going and they're so busy and they've got more money than they need, but yet they feel like they're out of breath and they feel like their business is controlling them instead of them controlling their business? What do these boxes represent that someone was madly in love and they thought the love was perfect and then all of a sudden sudden something happened that proved unfaithful and so what do these boxes represent about life in one word one word anybody put it in the chat or just speak it out Maybe change. One word. what is it change Change. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. Change. Okay. It's, it's similar. Okay. Change. One word. Somebody else. Limitations. Limitations. Yeah. Limitations. Okay. That's, that's what I was thinking too, because it's a box. It's like, there's okay. no way out. You're boxed in like a trap. Okay. Limitations. Like a trap. And then I'm looking at the square in the, in the center. It kind of looks like the self yourself and then there's still so many other influences on right you. okay good good point good point uh what else uh change limitations i'm not looking at the chat if someone could read the chat because i have my full screen up uh annabelle if you could read the chat is anybody at one word for me it's like hope and dreams what for what, what is it hope and dreams hope okay one word so it's hope, hope. or dreams We'll put both, so, one, one, inner, one hope and one dream. Inner self for Michael. Self-image? Is that what you said, Annabelle? Speak up. Inner self. Oh, inner self. Okay, inner self. I have this on the big audio, and sometimes it, it, it kind of reverberates. In, inner self, okay. What else? You know, as a result of the October project, this came about and it came about that this led to one thing, one led to another thing. And then I made a commitment on a course that was very expensive. Um, and it, it had, this had nothing to do. This had something to do with business, not, not had anything to do with where that I woke up this morning. But by the way, folks, this was simple four boxes. OK. And I went, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. This is unbelievable. So. And it's the struggle I'm going through with my own family, trying to get people out of their own head. And, um, you know, I, I, I wrote a text yesterday that, that I really, um, you know, you would think that it was received with, oh, thank you so much, but it was received with, stay the hell out of my business, basically. Um, and, and it's something that's so hard for all of us to do. And, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I won't, it's still a little bit too personal to read all this, but um, what this represents is wisdom. You can use the word wisdom, or you can use the word enlightenment, of which I, I, um, I kind of interchange. So you have a 15-year-old, okay? You have, you have, you know, certain wisdom you can apply and a lot of times, myself, I had four children. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was this best parent. I thought I was a great parent. I thought I had the best stuff for them. And yet, three out of my four children had drug issues. Why? Then, you know, there's other things like, you know, I can go on and on about business where you reach the height of the mountain and you know what's going on and you think you know it all. And then all of a sudden... Something comes crashing down. I could talk about a 40 year marriage to, you know, so on and so forth. But anyway, this first box represents your first seven years of life. You came out of this box from the outside, this eighth box. You came out of that dimension, right? I call it love. I call it divine intelligence. I call it God. We came from God. We were created by God. We were created by life. We were created by love. I believe it's divine love. I believe our edict in life is peace on earth and goodwill to men. Uh, so we came from that to come down here and get into these little boxes to 
blow them up, not to live in them. So your first box is your first seven years. This is proven now in epigenetics uh, with Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Our first seven years of our lives predict the rest of our lives. Now, the box that Adolf Hitler was born into, was it him or was it his box that caused him to decide what these other dimensions would take, take forth, right? If he was born into a all-American, beautiful, wonderful family and mother and dad were Harvard graduates and they were very successful and they were emotionally balanced and they had emotional intelligence. Adolf Hitler was born in that family. Would Adolf Hitler have been different? Um, and we don't have to debate. It's not a debate. It's just thinking. That's what, you, that's what we're, you know, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. So we're just examining our life, examining life in general. But this is the first seven years of our life. Now, what happens, according to, um, according to uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, I just had someone wonder in the office, did, did, did you look, are you looking for a medical officer? Are you looking for the Board of Realtors? One or two. It's around the corner to the left. Okay, I didn't want to interrupt. No problem. Thank you. Um, so this represents the seven years of life. Now, here's the issue that Bruce Lipton brings in, is that we all keep, even though we're growing physically out of here and going into these other dimensions of life, we still have our reference points in this box the first seven years. And then we break out of this box, eventually, hopefully, healthily, if we're healthy, we can break into our next box of our, our, our next seven years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. And hopefully we don't, this box is totally destroyed. It's obliviated. It, it's just gone. So now we're mature and we're now at least operating in this, even though we come back and result of this. But a lot of times we'll get stuck in this box. And even though you could, you could be 70 years old and still be living in this box or this box. I, I am out here a lot of times, about 10%, and I say a lot, 10%, but I keep coming back to these boxes. I keep coming back to these boxes. This out here is the eternal sphere. This eighth box is the, the eighth dimension, I'm gonna call it. I'm making up my own dimension now. The eighth dimension is that spiritual box, that box that is perfect, that box that has no nothing, nothing, nothing. But yet that box did permeate us internally and we came here with it, but our programming is the box. Our first seven years, the next 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 years. So the whatever you go through, whatever you're being tapped, when you have a 15-year-old, when you have a grandson, when you have a daughter that's resisting enlightenment, this is enlightenment, right? This is wisdom. And we so many times I had some a loved one tell me yesterday saying, listen, I don't need that. I need to build boundaries. Right now, I, I agree. There's a whole emotional thing and the psycho, the psychological and thing of you have to have certain boundaries. But a lot of times these boundaries become boxes and walls versus being open to everything. What can I learn from my 15 year old? What can I learn from my 75 year old wife? What can I learn from from a new agent? If, if I'm in the real estate business and coming in with their enthusiasm, it just turns me on. Someone asked me the other day, Fred, why are you still doing what you're doing? I said, because of you. I am because of you. I am because you are. <laughs> and I just love watching that growth and people break boxes, right? So as we talk about the emotional, spiritual dimension of these things, our goal is to get out of our boxes as soon as possible and stay out of them, though. Quit coming back to the first seven years of programming that we do. And a lot of times, whether it's avoiding here, I'm going to read you this. This, this, is, this has meant so much to me. This, this is why it's so important to keep learning and growing and being green. And um, I want you to just write this down. Annabelle, type this in the chat. Type this in the chat. The magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. The magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. We don't want to work on that marriage that we're not happy with. We don't want to address the facts. Why do we have a sexless marriage? Why do we have a marriage that we fight on that? Why We don't want to work on that. Let, let's just bury it. Let's just stay within our boxes, right? 
our, our production and if we're in business, you know, we, we, pro- we bring up phone calls that, but I don't want to know about why we're not making, I, mean, I don't want to know about the phone calls. I want to know what is causing us to stay in a box that we won't do the stuff that creates the magic of getting up into the different dimensions. And folks, this, we come in and out of these boxes, but the real goal of a mastermind is to help each other, is to make sure we take this box, this first seven years and throw it in a fire and burn it so we don't ever have to come there again, that we come back to the least of all boxes that has a little bit more maturity of enlightenment and wisdom. And wisdom is the ability to see and to choose the highest possible goals together with the surest means of obtaining them. So in, in the other quote, I want you to think, Annabelle, write this in the chat. Is it one day for you? Is it one day for you? Or is it day one for you? Folks, you better get one day out of your thinking. And when I'm, and when I'm saying this, I'm talking to myself. You know, one day I'm going to really be consistent on my health. One day I'm going to quit drinking. You know, uh, one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to do that. One day I'm going to do this. One day, or is it day one? Have every day as day one. Have every hour as day one. Because that, that's the difference. And the work, the magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. And we avoid the work of spiritual, um, spiritual growth of enlightenment. It hurts. It hurts to sit and take time and get honest and look at each other's eyes and say, wow, we've been together for 20 years. And I, let me tell you how I'm feeling. I, I ran into so much pain and, and by staying in these boxes and not opening up the boxes. And sometimes these are opening up boxes of wounds and inner child stuff and hurts and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, what the goal is of a mastermind is help us to get out of these boxes and live over here. Whoops live over here in this seventh box where it's totally bright. All these go away where you're just, you're living in the light. You're living in no matter what happens on the outside. That's why I am spending so much time in, in the mind body mastermind on, and you could be as happy as a lark right now and you're in love and you're, you're, you're just, you know, even though you've been married five, six, seven, or in a relationship, eight years, nine, and you're just so blissful and things are going well in business, and all of a sudden, boom, what happens? Even though when that boom happens, if you got the concept of these box and the enlightenment, like the Stoics, right, nothing changes, right? So one of the reasons I spend so much time in Mind Body Mastermind on this project in October that I'm trying to get people to participate in. How come this won't go away? So, get out of here. Go, go, go. And show. Um, is that without us doing this, folks, and it's not me, it's not George Philbeck telling you, you know, Tom Martin or me in business wise or, or Joe Dispenza or Tony Robbins, it's what are you telling yourself? This is why this exercise in October, and I hope you take the next 12 days and participate in this with me. And as you're doing it, think of me. As I'm doing it, I'm thinking of you. I, you need to know what the, I call it the Holy Spirit. Your inner voice is telling you because it's going to tell you something totally different. It's telling me. You all didn't wake up with boxes on your mind this morning. Your life's not that boring. <laughs> Neither is mine. Mine is very exciting. Um, but please participate in this. And then the mind body mastermind, the mind body mastermind. Um, this morning, this was, at, I don't know, six hours ago. This is what I do at six hours ago, over six hours ago. Um, this day, my mind is quiet to receive the thoughts you offer me. And I accept what comes from you instead of from myself. I do not know the way to you. I do not know the way to that seventh box, but you are wholly certain, Father. And again, if you're not, if you're not comfortable saying God, Father, then say, this is out of A Course in Miracles, it's very generic. Say, say universe or whatever you're comfortable with, but you are wholly certain, Father. Guide your son. A Course in Miracles is masculine. Your son along the because sonship is everyone, humanship, human beings. Guide your son along the quiet path that leads you, that leads to you, that leads to you, that eighth dimension that we can still live in our physical. Why are we having the war in, in, in Israel? 
It's because of belief systems. It's because of belief systems, it's because of people in boxes. It's because of people in boxes. So, and you know, come in and participate. I'm back doing, yesterday was day five of the lessons of a mini course in life. These are only three, well, this is four minutes long. Pick up those daily lessons, pick up those daily lessons. Uh, I did a talk on 9-11, a nine minute talk. Come and listen to that nine minute talk to really, the, the, I called it, where was heaven on 9-11? This was done about, um, I, I think, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. It applies to the Israeli war. It, depl- it applies to our own inner wars. And not only the wars of, of, um, of the, the negative, but even the positive. Sometimes we have so much good positive going on. I know when I was rocking and rolling and you know, stuff in five states and hundreds and hundreds of units and hotels and developing 52 acres all at the same time that I thought a lot of it was good, but yet it was, it was like a box that was so crazy in the pressure. And then someone told me, one day, wow, Fred, they, a friend of mine known me for years, they came over to see me and they got in my car and, you know, and put the top down as we we're driving to this appointment. I said, Fred, you're unbelievable. Blah, 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 blah. And I, I said, wait a minute, Terry. I said, you know, wow, what else are you going to do? I said, you know what, Terry, I really want to become nothing in life. Folks, I was on top of the world. There was nothing I was lacking. And yet I was saying, I really want to become nothing. Because that box was calling me. And so I want to bring this up. Um, Annabelle, put in the link, uh, put in the, the, this book here, the tap. Um, many of you know that, you know, my relationship with Frank McKinney. And I want you to please order the tap. This book was, an, again, just one of many, 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 many. Uh, and this is the 2022 edition. He updated how to san- how to set how to sensitize yourself to God's call and be prepared for the times when you're most likely to experience tap moments. Because what we do with these boxes, our lives get out of shape. And what it is, it is it, like when you have a 15 year old, you're going through this. When you have a grandson that's just break that that has a tendency to break your heart, but my heart's not breaking. My my head is opening up, going, okay, that's a big drum roll on top of the box, trying to get my daughter out of her box, trying to get me as the grandfather out of my box. It got me to realize I've been a giraffe all my life. I mean, a um, a, a, giraffe, but yet I have all these zebras around me. My my beautiful wife was a zebra all her life, and I try to change her stripes. And because I was a giraffe, I saw what she couldn't see. But she was still a beautiful little zebra, and I wanted to change her stripes. And I spent so many years in exhaustion, but yet there was a knock. It was a tap on the box. It wasn't to blow it up. And, it, and it, she wasn't fit for me. It was, it was a tap on the box. Hey, listen, deal with the box that you're in. Let's be honest. Let's blow this thing up. Let's, let's find out what's going on, right? So the, the tap was so beautiful when I went through this years ago. Um, what unexpected consequences come with an enlarged territory and how they gain the confidence to handle the rapid rate of ascent that accompanies the tap. Now that tap is not happy all the time. That tap is not comfortable. That tap is painful sometimes. Yesterday was very painful with the text message going back and forth and what I was accused of again. And and you know, you don't understand what it's like to be a single woman. And did you don't, you don't pay public. And you know, you know, I'm putting a boundary up against you. I'm building a wall. I don't want you in my life, you know, but it's still a tap. And I'm going to keep banging on the boxes. Not mean, not ugly, but love is not always painless, right? And I don't know about you, but man, my box that I've been in for the last couple months, man, it's been noisy in there because... Divine intelligence keeps banging on it with truth, saying, hey, there's another dimension I want you to get to. You keep leaving the eighth dimension. You get up there, but you only stay up there for a couple hours. Come back up. Come back up. So that box, they want me in the eighth dimension. How in the moment of perceived silence, here it is, when it seems as if your prayers aren't being answered in the ways you'd hope, you invited to rephrase the question and receive something greater than you've ever imagined. And even when a 15-year-old, an 18-year-old, even when a marriage is going down the tubes, whatever, we can learn from that. 
right? And it's a tap on the box. It's that noise going on in our life saying, get out of that box. What to do if you've been feeling as if your success isn't enough? Hello, $5 million net worth wasn't enough. As if there's something more that would bring you fulfillment, happiness, and a sense of greater accomplishment. Why you can't really understand or apply such popular ideals as the law of attraction and the secret until you've been tapped. Well, I'm going to correct my wonderful, beautiful friend, Frank McKinney here, and I'm going to say this. We all are being tapped, but I'm going to reword his his writing. Forgive me, Frank, if you're listening to this. Why you can't really understand or apply such popular ideas as the law of attraction and the secret until you know that that noise in the box is the tap of God. That's the way I would reward that Frank McKinney. (laughs) What a beautiful man. Um, The way compassionate capitalism and spiritual stewardship are meant to coexist. Folks, Christmas is around the corner. Get the tap for every loved one you can. Get the tap. By the way, when you buy this book, you are going to feed 200 meals in Haiti. 100%. 100% goes to Haiti and feeds. So if you don't buy five of these for Christmas, I'm going to say it right now, you're being selfish because you're holding people back from experiencing this. You're letting people stay and live in their own boxes and you got to stop. We are here to spread love. We are here for that, that divine integrity, that divine intelligence mandate, peace on earth and goodwill to all. Peace on earth and goodwill to all. And you can't do that until you have peace. And then you have peace. First, it starts with that internal, personal peace that starts with this project over here, your inner voice of what you're being called to. What you're being called to is different than anybody else. First, it starts here. Then it's going to go out to your 15-year-old, your 2-year-old, your 4-year-old, your 70-year-old, your 75-year-old. It's going to go out to your world. First, it starts in your inner world, your inner side, your inner self. Then it goes out to your little, almost like the circles, almost like the box, but picture a circle. Then it goes out to your loved ones. And you're going to get people to reject you when you want to show love because they're going to see it as something else. The truth hurt. The, The truth will set you free, but the truth hurts a lot of times. It hurts. I know. I have coaching clients that have hung up on me. I have coaching clients that have called me every name in the book. I have family members that tell me that I've destroyed something instead of that I've healed it when it was healing and they didn't even know it because it is tough to live in truth sometimes, but it's beautiful. It's light. It's fulfilling. And it comes around. Love always wins. I could tell you story after story, personal story of how love eventually won. So please stay here. So your divine mandate is inner peace first. Then it's family peace. It's marital peace. It's relationship peace. It's peace with your customers. When I hear an agent coming and say, oh, that seller, oh my gosh. Da, 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 I go, you don't get it. That seller is your greatest teacher. There's nothing wrong with that seller. They're just, they just are who they are. You are who you are, right? That's why I love business. That's why I love and capitalism, it, it causes us to be bigger people. And the failures cause us to be bigger people. So please get in here, do this project with us, comment, participate, share your stories of your 15 year old, share your stories of the giraffe. And if you have a 75 year old zebra you're living with and you're a 70 year old giraffe, share those, be real, be, be authentic, be transparent, be vulnerable. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I keep telling my family that Listen, I'm sorry for the truth, but I am going to make sure before I leave my usefulness here that I'm going to help everyone I can to fall in love with love. And that's not esoteric. It's not kumbaya sitting around the fire. This is real down, deep, dirty. You can't get a household. You can't get this for you in the real estate business. It love it penetrates all this stuff. It penetrates all of it. So join in, uh, get, you know, understand your tap. Please buy the tap. Let's make that a project. That's going to be my December project, the tap um, in, in uh, November. I'm sorry, November because of thankfulness. And um, so keep participating in the mind body community. Invite your friends, invite your family. 
And let's get ourselves to fall in love with love. Let's get our families to fall in love with love. Let's not ever be upset about anything. See, being upset and anger is nothing but threat and value. And a lot of parents going through what uh, Steph is going through right now. What'd you do that for? What'd you do? What? And it's just, it's all learning experiences, right? And same way with tough sellers, tough buyers, tough whatever else. So with that, I'm sorry I got on the ramp, but that, that box thing. Ken Markham, we, I'm calling on you, buddy. Help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> what box are you in, my de- friend, today? What box are you in today? <laughs> well... Um, I'm not really sure, <laughs> this, you know, the, so, you know, in, in, in studying Kabbalah for 25 plus years and studying Torah for about the same amount of time, which is of course the Bible, um, there's something called Tikkun, which is the correction of the soul. And so that we all come here for a particular reason. Whatever you don't work out in this lifetime that you came here for, you just get, you get to do it again and again and again. So, so that's, you know, so that's part of it. Um, You know, we, we, things that happen to us in this life, um, could be coming from a previous life Uh, relationships that you didn't work out you get to do again sometimes you're a man sometimes you're a woman sometimes you're something else Um, in addition to that um, one of the things that occur is um, kind of like three three generations if that makes sense. So, for example, anything that my grandfather did, action, speech, thoughts, affect my father and me. Whatever my father did affect me and my son. Whatever I do affects my son and my grandson. So you have to be very careful with every thought, every word, and every action you have so that your family gets the benefit and the merit of all the good things that you've done. Um, So, you know, there's a lot of things that are, you know, that are taking place all at the same time. Um, You know, how you figure out what's happening and why it's happening is, you know, is something, you know, some people can, can figure out some people, you know, could specialize in helping people figure out. But if you become aware of your thoughts and you become aware of your speech and you become aware of your actions, you have definitely an advantage um, to, uh, you know, figure it out on your own. Right, right. Uh, You know, Ken, what's interesting, uh, folks, and this is important, um, is that, you know, the Kabbalah and, and um, you know, is really, really deep. And, and, and I have a number of friends that are, that are involved in the Kabbalah. And it, it, at one point in my radical Christianity, I would never, I would just, I, w- I would start debating with Ken, right? Um, and I finally realized if God is so small that someone doesn't have another view of everything, then that God is very questionable. So what Ken just talked about was a lot of the Kabbalah and um, and beautiful stuff to really be thinking about, right? And so when Ken and I were sitting around and we were chatting, and if we were chatting about that, I like, go, oh, "Wow, that's amazing that 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 thought that that beautiful thought." Um, and I don't, I really can't, any, no one can't say. I used to now I could I could take the scriptures, okay, because I was. Well, I'm like a theologian, right? And I could show Ken a bunch of scriptures. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, Ken. Whoa, 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 whoa. But he could show me a lot. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people say the Bible contradicts itself. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. Men contradict themselves, right? It's like saying to here, here's the answer. You ready? How many of you ever ask an answer? How many of you really question in your heart? If you say no, then I'm going to question your integrity. That why, God, is there so much suffering? Any of it? Of course you have. Of course you have, 
right? Why are there starving children? Why is there cancer? Why is there saying to you, we ask all these questions. Here's God's answer. I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> I was going to ask you the same thing because it's up to us. So what Ken was talking about is so beautiful that we're here. And, there, and there's a scriptural verse. Well, you believe in the scriptures from a spiritual point of view or just, it, it's great life history. It's great everything. It's power, power, power. But, you know, the, one of the things that he's talking about is in, in a, the Christians used to used to go around and say, you're going to have your, your, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, they're going to be punished because of you. Like you're so evil. No, it's just mistakes. It's saying, Hey, as these mistakes happen, as these mistakes happen, right. The second, third, fourth generation will be affected. If you remember last week, I think it was a week before I said, every action and every inaction you take someone 300 years from the day gets affected. It's big folks. It's fun. It's beautiful. It's to think that way in that eighth dimension. And so get out, keep letting your get, let me rattle your box. Let Ken rattle your box. Let, let anybody rattle your box. Let, let I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this and please don't let anyone misquote me on this. Let this war rattle your box and your belief systems, because we have, we are here to learn and understand and be with one another, not to be out there saying my opinion's right. And I'm going to put a sign up and say how wrong you are. You know, it's, it's, you know, we don't know it's bigger than any of us. You know how I know it's bigger than any of us? Because those that were here 110 years ago that were had their signs up and they're fighting and their bombs, they were dropping. And, you know, and the Christians were tormenting people and the Catholics were tormenting people and the Muslims were tormenting people. You know, we blame the Muslims. Listen to my 9-11 speech. Where was heaven on 9-11? You know, folks. It's amazing how big life is and it's freedom and it really energize should energize you and it should be bright. Live in the eighth dimension. Not I, I don't I think I made that up. The eighth dimension <laughs> outside of all those boxes. <laughs> Live outside all those boxes. You know, soulcancer.org is not finished yet, but it, it, if you can go to start reading some of the stuff I'm doing with soul cancer, I said 95 percent of us are affected with soul cancer and we're all just at different stages of it. Right. Um, there's 5% of people that I've met in my life, and I, every book I read, it, it kind of complements what I think. Is there about 5% of us that escaped it somehow because there was such purity in the line or something? But 95% of us have a soul cancer that won't let us alone, the ego that. Um, so anyway, Ken, Was thank you for that. that was great. Yeah, Fred, go ahead. Virginia's dad is here. Yeah, my dad is here. Hey, hey dad, where are you? He's Miguel Esquivel. Miguel, where are you, my friend? Perhaps trying to figure out with the microphone. <laughs> okay. But he will be there. Oh, good, good. Well, we, we're bringing Virginia's dad on, who is uh, from Mexico, correct? Yeah, yeah, you're all from Mexico. And at Christmas, every time he would give a toast, he would say, repeat the toast, Virginia. That we have to, to pray for a good death. Like, you know, pray that. for a good death. And, and, and I call that eternalizing, right? Eternalizing. The problem with all of us is that we internalize everything. You know, we get a breakup, we internalize it. We get a sale foster, we internalize it. We get someone that hung up on us, we internalize it. We get our spouse that said something, you know, we internalize, we internalize everything. Well, if you learn to internalize, you know, eternal, eternalize, eternal, that everything's eternal, and none of that really matters, any of that, right? <laughs> and, and death is not death, what we call death. It's just the end of our bodies. It's the end of our usefulness of this particular body. And some views, like Ken just shared, that they think that, that you'll get another chance, another chance, another chance. And other views, I have a view that I believe we just go back to love and we had a particular call. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's much bigger than any of us can explain. And that's what makes it all beautiful. But I love that toast when I heard it last week. So I told Virginia, I said, have your dad to come and say hello to us and give us a toast. <laughs> so is he on yet or no? I Miguel. I need to figure out how to unmute. Daddy if you can't figure it out, we'll do him next time. Anyway, well, I was going to have him make a toast to us uh, and explain Frank, that. Can I say that. one other thing? Yeah, go ahead, Ken. So there's something in Judaism which is called halacha, okay? And halacha is what's, what's considered Jewish law, okay? But there's two aspects of it. One is biblical and one is rabbinic, meaning coming from the rabbis. And there's a great distinction between the two. So 
you could have six rabbis in a room and go over a Torah portion, for example, we're going into Noah right now, and they could all have different points of view on the same Torah portion on a particular line or a particular verse. But a biblical halacha is coming down from thousands of years. It's not in a, it's not, you know, so it's not, it's, it's much more than an opinion. It's like, this is, this is the way that it is. Right. And that's a beautiful thing about Judaism. Those six rabbis won't sit there and debate and argue with one another. Correct. Yeah. They'll, so this happens in yeshivas where you'll have um, a chabrusa for seven years and you'll study with this person approximately one hour a day, seven days a week for seven years, wow. and you'll finish a certain a certain portion. And so what happens is, is one and one, when they're studying together, doesn't equal two. It could equal ten, a thousand, t- because you're getting different points of view. Mastermind. Of how you're viewing it. Mastermind. And- yeah. yeah, that's a true right, master. Right. And it's and, and you have you could have hundreds if thousands of students in one room and they're right. all as as a study team. Um, right. In other words, two people at a time, not all thousand people at a time. Right. But they're in groups um, right. of right. twos. But there's there could be 500 groups of twos. And so, I mean, so it, it, it's an incredible process to develop, you know, to develop yourself because. Yeah you realize that your, your opinion isn't necessarily um, right or wrong. It's your opinion. And then when somebody else is giving it, it's like, wow, I never got that angle. That, that is a message that needs to permeate all of every other religion too, right? Um, and, 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 and see, I tell people is that your religion is not a, you know, you'll see it in soulcancer.org. There is no such thing as a universal theology, philosophy. It's impossible. There, it can't be. It never will be. But there is not a universal experience, a universal. We just experienced what Ken was talking about. It's a universal love. I love Ken. I, I just experienced him. So I experienced that, that wisdom that they just shed on me. Um, so that's love, folks. So a universal love is not only possible, it's inevitable because it's internal and it's inherent. Now, there's a whole issue of, you know, people's view of what, you know, that the things are getting worse and there is an end time, which is all nonsense. And that's another subject for another day. <laughs> but it's big. It's big. Um, you know, there's. And I got to be careful because it's going to sound political. It's going to sound religious. It's going to sound. You know, uh, but there is um, the, the, the verse that we all shall become Israelites. <laughs> and that means that God will become all in all to everybody. In other words, that there won't be any argument. There won't be any debate. There won't be any wars. By the way, all the conflicts we're going on right now are almost minute compared to the 1300s when 70 percent of all men died in war and conflict. Here, you can't even almost you can't even measure the percentage of people that are dying almost. It's such a small percentage. So the world's not gotten worse, it's gotten better, right? So that wisdom you just shared, Ken, thank you for that. Um, yep. Thanks. Uh, there's, there's a whole lot more of this. Anyway, did Miguel get on, Virginia, for a toast? He, Can't do it? He says that he's listening, but next week he will talk because he's hoarse. He told me oh, he's good. Okay. I'll tell him I wanted to bring a toast. We're all going to have our coffee cup or whatever and take a toast from Miguel <laughs> next week. Tell him to get on like around uh, nine o'clock or so. Or, or So we have the whole group here. All right, let's let's do this. Um, anybody else? Come on, someone speak up. Talk about this morning. Talk about the ha. Uh, tell me if you ordered the tap for Christmas, Christmas, Hanukkah, for gifts, for birthday gifts. Uh are you going to get what box? Tell somebody speak up. What box are you going to get out of the day? How many of you have been feeling you've been living in a box? Come on, somebody unmute that mic. Olivia, it looks like you're ready. Or was she multitask? I think I called her multitask. I sent an email. No, did I? What's uh, one of them? <laughs> speak to us, girl. Speak to us. Yeah, I think we all kind of um, get in the day to day living in a box. You, you kind of um, things just kind of speed by with the day and you're not thinking about, you know, the bigger um, goals you have and um, kind of a bigger picture. So 
Okay. Okay. She, she, she got out of that one pretty good. <laughs> good job. Um, so we don't know it's true. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, what's the chat say, Annabelle? Anything there? Uh, we'll put the tap in one more time. Good information that after hey. I said that those boxes, they Go look on. like limitations for me. I was driving and I put the cell phone at the door. And at a certain point, when I look at the image of the boxes from a different perspective, they were looking like like a 2D pyramid, you know, and uh, I, and instead of looking as perspective as limitations, I was looking like as a as a possibility of growing and going up. Amen. A, a I, I see. I'm so glad you spoke up because that means I gave an indication of their limitation. Thank you so much. Cause what it is, is just the opposite. Thank you so much for that, Miriam. That was Miriam, right? Yeah, Cause I had to yeah. come Yeah. I it can't see. It was very speaking. interesting because it was just a different way of looking at the, those boxes and the, the position that the cell phone was. And I could see in a different perspective. Wow. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> very good and, and guys listen one of the indications uh try to get mind body please take the october project listen to the inner voice i'm going to say this and I, I i know it sounds radical which i am kind of radical as i think you all know a little bit but um in a good way i'm radical for love i want everybody to be in love with love um the if you have any upset in your life if you have any frustration in your life that is an indication you're living in a box that 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 you you have uh, you that that's a knock. Let that anger is threatened value, frustration is threatened value. It, it's that it's 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 an indication that um, it's an indication that the magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. Frustration comes because you're avoiding something. Anger comes from threatened value, and you're avoiding to go deeper with that person. You're, you're, or you're giving into them, right? And you're, and you're burying your power, right? So yeah, this is all about expansion. It's all about living in this dimension over here that's bright and light and white and, you know, and that there's no frustration over here. And, and, and number seven, you know, um, you know, yesterday was could in, in, a, in an emotional family, um, psychological setting, it could have been very stressful for me, if I didn't see from the, the bigger dimension and banging on someone's having to bang on someone's box, saying that get out of the box, get out of the box. And and I had no anger. I had no even though it was coming at me, I had no frustration, even though that was coming at me. I had no judgment at all. I had nothing but empathy and love and, and pure peace for, the, for, for my loved ones. Even though I said, because I just gotta be the light. And as we all grow into these dimensions, and it's not about us becoming better people because we are as perfect as we could ever be and need to be because we are as God created us. We're perfect exactly the way we are. We just have all the belief systems. This is why I'm going to do so much work on the soul cancer thing and um, is that the soul cancer just convinces there's something wrong and there's nothing wrong with any of us. We are perfect. We are exactly the way God created us before we got here. It's just that all these belief systems have convinced us of other things and we got to destroy these boxes. Now, these are nothing but growth opportunities, Miriam. Thank you for speaking up. I really thought that was cool, that different dimensions of the boxes. That's cool. All right, super. All right, anybody, uh, one last thing. Someone really sent us off with a charge. Somebody. I can um, share something, uh, Fred. I think, you know, um, I, I coach with uh, one of Tony Robbins' coaches, and she's always saying to me that, you know, talking about the boxes and where we put ourselves in. Um, sometimes we stay in those boxes so long that we kid ourselves and it becomes our identity, right? And breaking through, even though we know we should break through, um, it's sometimes it takes so much out of us that we rather agonize and still feel the pain of staying within the box. So um, we just have to have some kind of lever to break through that because we're so much more than 
staying in that small little box. And our physiology and the way we talk to ourselves, the way we wake up and the way we move will help. But um, just, you know, a lot of us, I think, are still, uh, yeah, basically the pain of staying in that box is sometimes, uh, because you've been in so long, it's kind of like warm, like a blanket, yeah, you, right? Well, yeah, I'll tell you, Krista, oh my gosh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. The, and, and this is Tony's statement, I think, is that the, um, the pain of getting out of the box feels greater than the pain of staying in it, right? Um, and it's not. It, it, it's, it feels like, like this pain I'm going through yesterday, I, did, I started not to do it, right? I started not to speak up. I thought, no, no. I thought, wait a minute, that's not who you are, right? I, I've got, you know, and it, it helped me get out of even another box I was in. Listen, I'm going to make a confession here. When I, I got converted to Christianity as an 18 year old kid, I became a theologian. I literally I've studied the Torah. I've studied the the Quran. I've, I mean, I and I was in a box for 35 years and I love my box. It was comfortable. I could tell everybody, including the, the Jews, including Jehovah Witnesses, including Muslims, exactly where they were wrong, how they were wrong, why the theology of the Bible was there's a concept that, that <laughs> it's called Calvinism, right? It's from a the theologian named John Calvin. And Calvinism is made up of a word called tulip. Look it up. You're talking about a box, a limiting box, what the word tulip stands for in this theology. T for total depravity, okay? That we are totally depraved, but we've been full of, been given grace, but we're totally depraved. And, 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 <laughs> and it goes on. OK, and then it's it's and that. But I tell you, that box was the best time of my life. I felt from a financial perspective, from my family being in order, my things really being nice and perfect and and, and everyone looking at oh, the el I was an elder, you know, did it and everything looked perfect. But inside that box, no one else knew even though they had the same feelings, right? And as soon as I started opening box, looking out the lid, and I went to the leadership of this situation, they said, that's it. You're taking your box and leaving. Don't, don't you get out of this box. And I got thrown out, literally, 35 years. Now, I'm not talking about some sect or some cult. I'm talking about a really, really, um, I'm talking about the PCA, Presbyterian Church of America, which are very wonderful, lovely people. But I actually got evicted because <laughs> I wanted to speak outside the box. Uh, I said, let's go look at these other boxes. You know, I, I, let's, I think I can learn something from that box, that box. And folks, I'll tell you, it, it make it sound like that. Oh, my gosh, the light came in and this came in and that came in. It was just the opposite. You know, you would think everything just started going in a better direction. It actually started going in a worse direction. But truth will set you free. But the truth is painful. And that was a that was a suicide of a brother. It was another brother dying six months later in prison after 28 years. It was another thing of of uh, uh, other financial pressure. It went on and on and on, you know, but it's anyway. Life is just beautiful. Life is wonderful. Uh, break every box. Don't live in any box. And we're comfortable. We get comfortable. We it. it and we're taught that boxes are, are, are nice. Uh, this whole thing with boundaries. I'm, I know I look, I respect boundaries. I I've got, I got plenty of myself. Uh, you know, I, I try to, uh, but, but so many of us confuse boundaries for boxes. And it's a total different thing. There's some people that are so lacking in their love life, you know, and they could have, they could be in a relationship and lacking their love life, not just sex, but love life. Um, or, or they, they, they've never found the love of their life because They've got this box that they built and no one can get inside of it. Right. And so there's all these things. Anyway, Krista, thank you for that. That that was uh, that was that was great stuff. All right. Anybody else? I, I don't want to leave you. You just are just you, you really look. You guys just what you give me. And by the way, Krista, I'm going to be a little authentic, transparent. Involved. She looked at me the other day. She was the one. She looked at me. I don't know. I may be making this up. Did you put your hand on your hip when you said it? I think you did. She well, look. <laughs> She no, I, we were on I, the Zoom. No, no, you were in the office when you were in the office. I was you in were the, oh, that's right. That's right. I was in the office. And you yes. looked at me and you said, because she was having a struggle with an agent or something. I forget what brought it up. So she looked at me and she says, 
why do you do this? Or what was it? You said, why do you still do this? Right? Is that what you said? Why do you still do this? Why are you still, yes, why are you still <laughs> Try you know, interested and, and engaged with all of us? Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, I think, and I, may have made it, I, th I think I may have made it up. I think she put her hand on her hip when she said like that authority hip kind of grab, you know, <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, but, but the reason I do it, because this is where love is, right. It's, it's, it's getting out of people and also getting out of myself because you all force it out of me to force it. It, it. We all stir it up. That's a mastermind, a true mastermind, true mastermind. It's what Ken was just talking about with the rabbis. That's a true mastermind folks. Anyway, I right, love you all. Thank you all. Uh, you know, Mind Body Mastermind, please get your people, your friends, your family to engage that October project. I would just love to see more people commenting on it about, uh, tell me what your inner voice is telling you, what changes you're making, what boxes you're burning up. Um, okay. So, all right, Tiff, I think it's your turn. I think, uh, I think we're, yeah, 939. Wow. Okay. Order the tap. Okay. I, I want, I want to really hear your experiences from the, the tap. Oh, Miguel still on. Was he? Okay. We're going to have him speak up before because some people left. Okay. Miguel, thank you. All. Thank you for being here. Don't know you yet, but namaste, my friend. Okay. Ciao. Tiff, you there? Uh oh. I think Tiff. I'm here. Oh, there she is. <laughs> all right. Hey, Tiff, this.